So welcome back to Duel Links. Today we're doing a bit of a fun video, not Casey Cup, we didn't want to go in there. Today we're doing a bit of a fun video where we're going into PvP and we're going to be stealing people's decks unintentionally. Because for every duel we lose, we have to steal our opponent's deck. Which So it's going to be a challenge to try and win us, you know, just try and have fun basically. And see what fun decks we lose to and then see if we can avenge ourselves by winning with said deck. Now, I'm expecting this to go horribly, right? So I've started off with Melodius as my base deck because I feel like that if we lose with this, then it's only up from here, right? And we're facing Harpies, which is a very bad sign because I can't build this deck, which I didn't think about until now. But if you're like me, you've been waiting for a meta shift for a while now. Well, let's try shifting gears to today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. And don't forget to use my QR code and links down below to download yourself to your mobile phone or PC. We're all familiar with Raid, right? The dark fantasy mobile RPG with console quality graphics, hundreds of hours of gameplay, and now over 600 different champions to summon to your arsenal. But what exactly will you need all those skilled fighters for? Well, none other than Malik Kavar, Guardian of the Void Keep. He's a tough opponent, having led a life as a priest of light to eventually being exiled by his peers for seeing the truths about the universe. And he's a little bit angry about it. He will not hesitate to throw poison your way, and even as a special ability, it will deal all the poison damage you can take in one single blow, meaning one wrong move and it's all over for you. I'll give you a tip though, you'll need shield buffs, healing and debuff removals to stand a slim chance of winning. Now the reason I keep coming back to Rage is how much there is to do, event quests, daily missions, PvP and PvP battle arenas, and let's be real, I'm just addicted to cracking open shards to get some of Rage's insane looking characters and then sacrificing the weaklings to make my brand new shiny champions so much stronger. There's also a huge amount of new things going on in the world of Raid this month, from new champions to special events, and even the Guardian Ring, which gives you brand new ways to use and upgrade your champions, just what I like. And coming in December, Raid's bringing out one of the most requested features they've ever had. Just take a look at this. With all these new updates and even bigger one around the corner, now's the perfect time to get started in the world of Raid. Don't wait or else you'll get left behind. And if you want an even bigger jump start on everyone else, use my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen right now. New players will receive the epic hero Chonoru, 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill and an ancient shard so you can join me in summoning epic champions as soon as you log in. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of her blade. And you'll find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. So what are you waiting for? Download Raid using my links and QR code today. Normal summoning the Harpy Perfumer, okay, which is going to destroy the Harpy's hunting ground, which, you know, is a bit of a, a bit of a downside to, uh, to our My Valentine player there. Adding the Egotist, which is pretty standard, and then playing the Egotist going to summon out probably a Dancer, I'd imagine, or maybe just Harpy Lady 1. No, Harpy Lady 1, okay. I'm going to assume that she does, okay, yeah, she does have a set card face down. There is probably a, what do you play in Harpies, right? Maybe Karma Cut? I know a lot of, you know, a lot of top tier decks have been playing Karma Cut now. So let's see where we go. We have got first movement solo. Oh, I know it, it'll bounce back anyway, right? That's fine. That's perfectly fine. So let's special summon out our Soprano. Because why not? And then she'll go, I'm going to bounce you back to the hand because I'm a, nope, nope, okay. Fair enough, gonna special out Sonata. And then here's where we start to get bounced back to hand. Here comes the TTH, I forgot TTH. Book of Moon. Okay, fair enough. That really does mess us up. That that's a that's nice, nice combo there. That's great, but it, but it doesn't because we didn't normal summon yet. So we are still going to be able to, I believe. I'm sure you have enough attack points, right? Uh, where's the one? 23 and where are you? 26. So yes, we I think we have game with our score in hand. I think we actually have game. We we might be doing this. So Sonata into the uh, into this one. The Shopina, sorry. And then we'll go and grab our Snarter back to hand, special summon her out again. Uh, I'm then going to... Uh, let's set the Karma Cut, right? Because I don't think we'll need it here. And then we'll go bam into you. And then we're going to in damage calc, make score, make her zero. And this should just be game right here. 17 to the face, there we go. Wow. Okay. This might just be a melodious video. Because that went very well. So we don't, we won, right? So we don't change up, we don't steal our opponent's deck. I'm hoping... We don't see Harpies because I can't build them. I think I have one of the Synchro and then one of each of the SRs. Even though it's so good, 
I didn't really want to invest into it, which was a bit weird at the time, really should have done because that would have, you know, carried me for the past, God knows what, eight months, right, since it's been released. Yami Yugi, so could be Thunder Dragons, could be literally any other deck in the game, played Destiny Draw on a win streak. If he loses, he goes down a rank. It's 22 cards, not 24 cards, sorry, 24 card deck. And look at this. I'm just going to set Solo face down and then hope she floats, right? Because that's not very fair. Opening both of them in the hand because the skill, the skill doesn't go from the hand. So it's just, it's just dead. They're, they're just both dead for now. Dark Magic Curtain in for the Dark Magician. If you had a circle, you would have played it by now, which, but he might have a navigation face down, right? To summon out two from hand. And then next turn, given the gate. So let's go solo into, um, yeah, solo into Soprano, right? Because when she's summoned, we can then just add back the solo to our hand, which is so huge. It's such a good plus. Now he does have a quick, play spell he can play. Ooh, MST. I'm liking that. Right, I should have kind of, you know, I should have tried to activate that immediately, but doesn't really matter. Gonna hit the one in the back row. Come on. Let's see. It is a MS. Okay. Fair enough. Now, I could, I could technically, I could try this, right? This is a bit risky. It's very risky because I could be a TTH. It probably is. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to go and summon Mazata, right? Because we can actually go and get both these cards out from our hand. So, he he might come across, which will suck. But let's, he isn't doing anything yet, which is kind of strange. But sure, uh, let's just bring out Shapina. And then Shapina can grab the fusion back from the graveyard. <laughs> I wonder what this could be. I wonder what this back... It must be navigation, right? It's got to be navigation. And... Oh, no, I did I did summon, didn't I? I'm just being dumb. Of course I did. So, that's got to be navigation, which uh, which means really I should have gone and grabbed the Soprano. Oh, was it the, uh, the Snarf? Sorry. Karma Cut? You waited that long for Karma Cut? Okay. Uh, sure. But, of course, now you have Destiny Draw because you, uh, you played our Magical Curtain. Which will probably go and grab you, I would assume, a Dark Magical Circle. If I was to be a Yugi player and think Dark Magical Circle would make a ton of sense. It was a normal summon performer power. Oh, it's this deck. It's the Gal and Ghoul deck. Oh, I love this one. This is a very, very fun variant of Dark Magician. And if I have to lose to this and we can play it, then that's that's great. Trump Girl activating going to be fusion summoning with the Dark Magician as well. Going into Performer Pal Gatling Ghoul, which on summon I believe inflicts 100 bonus damage every card on the field, which is fine. And then can pop a card and deal damage, and then has enough damage to just attack directly and to win the duel. I'm not even mad because that means we can go and steal this guy's deck and play a bit of Dark Magician, which I haven't actually done. In a very long time, I tried to play that deck um, back when it first came out. And it was, you know, it was a bit iffy, right, in terms of actual performance. So let's see, this is, um, oh, wow. That is, uh, that is very messy. Uh, that's very messy. You Sakaki Pendulums, okay. Will you be a Master Rule 3 pension player or Master Rule 5? On a three win streak, seems to be Master Rule 5. And we're going first and, oh my god, this deck's playing Rod. Oh my god, that's so, that's so funny. I didn't even see. Um, so I could literally just go and grab. Um, I could go and grab the uh, the illusion magic. Right, I think I think right now that's the best base to grab illusion magic, because that's going to give us access to, um, the dark magician stuff. Right. So I'm gonna set navigation. I'm probably going to really no. I'm I'm gonna guarantee I can get it off right. I'm kind of worried that if I do that, then he is going to just MST the back row. And I won't have enough time to kind of uh, to, to change things around. But let's see. Let's see if Yu Sakaki Wild Yurabi can deal with a single face down navigation into two Dark Magicians with an Artemis. Beautiful Princess. Okay, he's playing Water Xyz. Or maybe Necros? Yo, Necros could be kind of fun. 
I haven't faced it. Oh, it is just it seems to just be standard water exceeds. Okay. So, I imagine if you know I'm on Dark Magician, you go into the. I would assume you'd go into um, the Hope Woven because I can't out that. <laughs> I can out an Abyss Dweller, I can't out Hope Woven. In for. Oh! That's very good. In for Heraldry Patriarch, okay. That's very good. However, it doesn't really um, do much because we're not going to be uh, we're not going to be summoning two dark magicians. We're going to summon a dark magician, and we're going to summon from our deck um, a copy of Performer Pal Trump Girl, and then we could use a rod to discard attribute it to uh, to add one back to my hand. But I don't think that's actually very worth doing, right? Actually, yeah, it probably is, right? If I go and tribute, I know it's kind of a sin tributing off the Trump Girl to add it back to the hand, but I think that might be the best play here. Because we're going to want to get off a search, right? And so if he has any disruption to this search, then we can negate him navigation. He doesn't have that, okay. Fair enough. Um, let's go and Dark Magical Circle. In for... Uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just add the uh, we'll add the Dark Magician to our hand. And then put you on top of the deck, that's fine. We could just make Dark Cavalry and have so many in the gates. Right? Yeah, we can. Okay, fair enough. Or we can make Dark Paladin. We don't have any spell cast discards, so we can't really do that. Dark Cavalry. Will you floodgate me? Yeah, you will. I forgot floodgate doesn't, um, yeah, I forgot that doesn't target. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. It wouldn't be a brand video without me misplaying out my ass. Uh, really, really, really wouldn't. But let's see where you're going with this into Double Fin Shark. So I would assume in this situation. You would make the uh, the Bahamut Shark package, but it doesn't appear you're going to, which I don't really get. But sure. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Now I'm going to try and take out the uh, this boy because he's very boss or so good to leave on the field. Fish depth charge. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, yeah, that is uh, that is that is that is that, that, that is game. That is. Losing with my very own favorite Dark Magicians. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fun. Uh, and so, once again, we are forced to steal a deck. And of course, we do have to use the same character that he used, so we were playing Tie the Binds. I don't think I have that on Yuya. So we will take that deck and we will put it on something else. I believe uh, the normal Yugi has Tie the Binds, right? I think I can go and, uh, and overwrite this. Um, Yeah, just, just ignore that Pendulum Exodia deck I was trying out. Uh, okay. So Wild Yurabi's deck, let's go. Active character, fine. This looks um very interesting. I, I like the back row. It is it is pure sharkage, right? With you know with the Canadias. Let's dive in. That that win that win rate is looking so so good with the um with, with the one win, two losses. And of course, we lose to Konami. Nice. And so back in we go for the ceremonial battle, Yami Yugi versus normal Yugi. If we lose, we lose a rank, and of course we open with absolutely zero fishes. Nice. So all we need to see now is one of our uh, is one of our boss or sharks, and then we actually can start playing the game. Otherwise, we're just going to be uh, not doing much. Oh, okay, not doing anything. Double fin shark though is kind of nice to see because we now at least have some uh, really cool plays with our Whitefish Salvage, which I didn't realize he was running. So that's very cool. We're gonna just tap in a little bit there, deal a K, and see what happens. Now this Yugi could have bricked, or he's playing a going second deck, and so he kind of just wanted to just leave it. Not many decks can put out 4K damage turn one. Cosmic Cyclone though, come on, please hit. All right, cool, hitting, the, hitting, a, hitting a Floodgate, that is, that is fine. And then playing Galaxy Cyclone, the double removal, going for the other, the other Floodgate Trap Hole. Okay. Do you have a third? <laughs> Do you have a third wind tunnel to uh, to destroy my face down? Do you have a, uh, a normal MST this time? Red Eyes Fusion. Okay. So we're going to be able to bounce that back, which is you know, really, really nice. In for the Archfiend Black Skull Dragon. This guy I lost to the other day. Um, did, did not like that one bit. So we're going to treat this and we're just going to destroy your Archfiend Black Skull Dragon. And now I'm hoping he can't just Red Eyes Fusion or play another Red Eyes card. But he has the insight. 
which does mean he can go and grab a red eyes um or just grabbing red eyes okay fair enough i would have thought you would have gone and oh he's giving me oh he's giving me the 50 50 i see so we're gonna try and meet that right with uh with a with a with an mst try and meet that guy okay you're gonna you're gonna put that one oh damn it really this could be literally anything but it's not looking like anything relevant okay it's not okay F fair enough we we get to keep our water exceeds for one more round let's just see what the Yu-Gi-Oh is playing actually because i'm kind of interested in what that face down was i would assume he would have gone for a red eyes spirit you're not playing spirit why aren't you playing spirit if you're if your guys get nuked you could just bring them back with a trap card why aren't you playing spirit okay it it seemed like a very heavy otk or bust strategy which you know with the lightning vortexes makes sense of course you just lightning vortex and then you rare fusion in for your black skull dragon going against a mokuba though is kind of cool because we don't really see mokuba on the ladder anymore now if this is a monster morph gan it's not it's life moves alpha okay okay and we opened oh my god it's blue eyes, of course it's blue eyes with life point boost alpha, and we open Butunifal, which isn't all that great to see. We could just do the same with Buzzsaw, right? If we didn't see a Buzzsaw, then sure, it would have it would have made sense, but we, oh, that face down's probably going to be a, a Providence, actually. Probably a Providence, and you're thinking of negating it, and you should do, yeah, you 100% should do in that situation, discarding the blue eyes alternative. You really had no other option, right? Okay, cool. So the annoying thing of Maiden, right, is that when she's targeted for an attack or by card effect, she can just special blue eyes out. Which, you know, is great, but it, it means that we can't really uh we can't really do much, right? We can now at least start to um hopefully make some excuses and pick away in that board a little bit. So let's see, let's go in for another bustle shark. And then we'll go and grab out a Sun Angler from our deck. Probably think it's the best one to kind of go for. Uh, maybe actually, no, given we have... Oh, we have any don't have any recursion, do we? So I'm actually going to grab the uh, the Dolphin, right? I'm trying to think of the play, the, the play that makes sense to go for. This is dead until he has two blowers on the board. I think we just go for Hope Woven. And then we can float on Destruction. And then we can use our uh, Fish Death Charge to blow anything else up that comes our way. So let's try that. In for Hope Woven, and we're going to. I'm just going to end the turn because I want him to start engaging first. So we now need to be a bit, a uh, little bit uh, proficient, right? Go and summon up the Buzzsaw Shark and hope that there is no Karma Cut coming down. It feels like there's something there. It really does. So I'm going to summon out um, another this one double fin right and then we're gonna use fish depth we use fish depth to tribute this and then we're gonna try and pop the uh let's let's go for it let's pop the maiden let's try maiden then going to activate going to uh, bring out a blue eyes which is fine because we have answers or the blue eyes whatever she summons if it's a dragon spirit, it's not. It's a normal blue eyes, okay? Tie the binds, and then we're going to place one of these guys face down and hope and pray that this guy doesn't get a uh, nuked. So we're going to go detach one with the effect of a hope woven. Hopefully there's no uh, there's no uh, thing there. There isn't. That's nice, attacking with you. And there's not going to be a drowning here because it was trainable. Nice. Very, very nice. Come on, Mokuba. Show me. Of course, you can't top like ultimate dragons. That is, the, the the only benefit here is you can't do that, but that back row to me felt like it was activatable. So I'm, I'm, I'm very curious again what that back row was. It was activatable for a very small moment when the Maiden was targeted. So I wonder what that could have been. Because you probably could have saved yourself actually. Um, it was another Ultimate Providence. That is all for today's Duelings video. Let me know down below what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next Duelings video. See you then.